Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome back to JJ's PC Builds. This is JJ with you once again. Today, what we're going to be doing is this. A lot of requests that it got to, um, the, you know, I'm going to break this off in the beginning. <clears throat> I get a few requests that want, you know, that some, my subscribers want to know how to set up uh, MSI Afterburner. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be putting it together for you and hopefully you'll enjoy it. We'll try to put time stamps for every little thing that we do, but we will get it there. This is going to be something I'm going to try something different. So do stick around. It's going to get interesting. Now what we're going to be doing is you go and you log in. Well, he already logged in. Go and search out MSI Afterburner. Download. And make sure that if you're getting it, make sure you download it from the right um, website from MSI. Make sure it says US MSI. So click on it and it'll come up with the cookie thing Then just hit accept then download afterburner. It'll ask you what folder you can put it in your downloads and then hit save and then wait for it to uh, finish. It says done. So now you can X out of this. Now, now that you've done that, now what you're looking for is that folder that you put into downloads. So what you're going to do is you're going to go down to the, the folder right here, your file folder, open it up, and then you're going to look for MSI Afterburner. I would suggest that you open up a document. I always, always open up a document and click and put new folder, type in MSI Afterburner. Okay, so now you're going to want to click the little arrow to go back, right? Make sure you click and go back. And you're going to take and you're going to cut this from your downloads. And then you're going to go into your document folders. And then you're going to go into MSI Afterburner. And then you're going to paste it right here. So, and then you right click, extract to here. And there, there's your folder that you need right there. So you're going to click on that, and you're going to go through all the instructions. It's going to ask you to download Reva Tuner. You're going to want to do Reva Tuner. So make sure you do the Reva Tuner and MSI Afterburn. Okay, once you get to that, and you download and everything, and it's all done, then what you want to do is you're going to want to open up MSI Afterburner. Just like so. Now, mine set up my way because this is the way I wanted it set up, but we can get you there. <coughs> what you're going to do is look for a cog wheel right here, and then you're going to be in the, con the control, what I consider the control panel. Okay, this is going to be your control panel to where, you know, you're in the general, you know, I mean, basically, if I were you, you're just starting now to use it, I would uncheck these two right here, start minimize and start with Windows until you're familiar with, until you're familiar with MSI Afterburner. Because if you don't, and you're not familiar with it, and you overclock something, and it saves it, and your computer shuts down and restarts, it's going to go into a boot loop. 
Some people are going to tell me different, but it's always good to have that safety measure, you know, just in case you overclock it too far and it, your graphics card shuts down your PC and it restarts. It's always good to not have MSI Afterburner to start up until you're familiar with it. So all I do is I, I check all these. The force constant voltage, I do not check. I do not check that. I do not use the beta versions. So just right here, I don't use the beta versions. I don't check anything that's down here. It's already pre-set up for me, so I don't need to do anything there. Nothing here. This is, says for AMD compatibility properties. This is not for, what we're doing is NVIDIA. This is the 4070. It's for NVIDIA. So, you know, I'm pretty sure about almost any NVIDIA products will work on this. And so will AMD. Even though we'll, we'll get into another video later on down the road when it comes to AMD and setting up for your AMD. Well, you can set it up just the same way. Just be careful on what you choose. Okay. So now we're going to go to the next step. Now what you want to do is you want to click on your fans. This is your fan curve. You can force the fan speed update on each period, which I do, and override the zero fan for a hardware curve, which I'd rather have my GPU, uh, the fan spinning, even if they're in low mode, to where they're spinning slow, I would rather have them spinning than not spinning at all. Okay, as you can listen to my system, I mean, let's let's go ahead and take the microphone and get it really close so you can hear me here when I switch it from point A to point B. So we're going to click cancel on this for a moment, and then I'm going to take and switch this off, and I'm going to cl click this all the way to 100% and hit apply. Hear my fans? That's what they sound like. You can barely hear it, but you can hear it. So I'll click that back on. It'll automatically go back to the 75% that it's set at. So it, I have it on a fan curve. Okay, let's, let's go back to it again. Let's go back to the fans. I have the predefined fan set at custom. You can set a custom curve. I got my curve right there. I got it starting at 50 and then going up to 75 and then going up to 85 or 87 and then 100 that's only it only reaches 100 when it reaches 68 67c it reaches 100 on the fans so if it reaches 100 on the fans then you know i'm kind of doing something that really is pushing the gpu but as only when it gets up to that high. But so far, I have not got it that hot yet. So basically, your fan speed update, you can leave it on 5,000 milliseconds. But there's pretty much nothing else you need to do in here. I mean, if you want to change your fan curve, you probably, you know, you can probably go in here and change your fan curve. So, but mine... Mine is on override, so I don't need to worry about anything, but you can set the fan up in here. So, just to let you know that. This is where you control your fan curve. Okay, now let's move on to the next little part. So do stay tuned. This is going in parts, so be aware. Now moving right along to monitoring. Go and go ahead and at the top where the your tabs are, click on monitoring. 
Okay, the one thing I haven't said on this yet is my 1% mark, but I do click on GPU temperature. Okay, now what you're going to have to do is basically this is an example. If you, whatever you want to use, you can do it that way. Okay, I'll use this vid as an example. In order for you to use this item, you have to click on this check mark first right here. And then after you do that, you have to highlight it. Then you have to go and show, on, if you want to show it on the on your uh, system tray, you can show it on your system tray. You can uh, show it in Logitech, keyboard, LCD display. I don't check that. You can show it on screen display. On screen display is the one you want. If you want to show it on your, your uh, desktop, on the, the taskbar, you can do that too right here. So, and you can change the colors, the text, the layered graphics color, I wouldn't mess with. I'd leave that alone. Pretty much everything else you don't need to mess with. Okay. It's basic and simple. Everything else you don't need to mess with. Only thing you got to worry about is the which one you want to click on. If you want to show on the screen display, which you should do with your your GPU temperature and stuff like that. Okay, so once you do all that, once you click it on here, and then you show the screen display and you show the tray icon, all you do is come down here and hit apply. And it's on the desktop. So, if you don't want it on the desktop, then just take and uncheck it, uncheck it, and then hit apply. It goes away. Simple as that. So, I set up my GPU temperature, my GPU usage, my memory usage, my memory usage and process, core clock, memory clock, Power percent. The power. You, I don't use the temp limit or the power limit or the voltage limit or the no load limit. CPU temperature. If you want to do individual CPU temperatures, you can do that. If you want to, you can do individual CPU temperatures. I do one temperature right here. That says CPU temperature. I do this one right here. That's the only one I really need. I don't need one for every one of the cores because it's all going to average into one big thing right here on the CPU temperature. So moving on. CPU usage, I'll put that in there too. I will do that one because I want to know what the CPU, how much the CPU is utilizing when it comes to, um, you know, the games that I play, how much CPU is being used and how much, you know, compared to how much the graphics card is using. So this will give you a good advantage. CPU clock, I want to know what my CPU is clocked out at <clears throat> so I can see if it's clocked out at a certain amount or if it's clocked out at max, it tells me where I'm clocked out at. So that's good to have too. Um, CPU power, this tells you how much CPU power you're using compared to, you know, like your GPU and so on. RAM usage, this tells you how much system RAM you're using. And frame rate and frame time, those are good to have. I got to still, I still got to modify the, the frame rate minimal and max and all that. I still got to modify mine. The 1% lows you can do, you know, many things you can do with this. I want to know what my GPU voltage is. You know, I don't have, to, I don't need, you know, to know these because I already got 
the main one checked, and that's all I need is the one that's mainly checked. I don't need any of these at whatsoever. These are my core counts, my core clock, my core power and stuff. I've already got one checked for it, so this saves a lot of space on your, your, um, your desktop when you're playing a game. You don't want all that utilized while it's running. So we're going to go back up this list again. CPU usage. GPU voltage. Frame time. Frame rate. RAM usage. CPU power. CPU clock. CPU usage, CPU temperature, your power, your power percent, your memory clock, your core clock, your memory usage, your memory usage process, my bad, and your memory usage. You don't need to know your front side usage and your bus usage. GPU usage and GPU temperature. That's all you need. And have them, I have all of them pretty much set for my taskbar. And I have them set for my, um, my screen when I go on to games and everything else. It pops up. On the screen, and I'm going to show you something. There's going to be another something else I got to tell you about this. So, moving on down the road to the next little clip. On screen display, make sure you go from monitoring to on screen display. Now, toggle on screen display. I got F12, okay, hide screen display F9, but it you can set F12 as your on-screen display because when you hit F12, it'll turn it on and off. So I just put F12 and I hit apply, and that's good enough. Now... There's not much more to this. When it comes to your on-screen display, it's pretty much as what it is. Now, we move on. Now, with benchmarks, I don't use it. With screen capture, I don't use it. With video capture, I don't use it. I should use video capture, but I don't. So. Profiles, I don't use profiles. User interface. This is what you want to use. If you want to get a window like mine, all you do is you know, down here, you can do the Windows 11 Afterburner Skin Dark by Derek's Design. That's the one I'm using. But they got many other skins as well. Make sure you pay attention to those skins because they have different. And I'll, I'm going to put this like this. Okay. Now, you see the way this one is here. With all this goodies and stuff right here. Now what? look what happens when I change it to like this. You know. You can get the graphs and everything else you want here. Now with something like this. You can detach it. If it cooperates. You can detach it. Huh, looks like it froze. 
No, it didn't freeze. But I'm just giving you an idea. So, you can change it to whatever screen you want. Just pick the one that's going to work best for you. I like this one better. This one I like better, so that's pretty much all there is to it. You can set the temperature format, Celsius or Fahrenheit. I got mine set at Fahrenheit. You can set it for 12. You can set it for your regular time or military time. Um, pretty much everything else you don't need to mess with. And that's pretty much it. So basically, that's pretty much all you need to know about MSI Afterburner. Oh, also too, Reva Tuner. Let's close that up and let's open up Reva Tuner. Let's show you Reva Tuner real quick. So start with Windows. Make sure it's on. Show on screen display. Make sure that's off. Set it to medium. When it app, application detection level, set it to medium. The rest of that stuff don't worry about. On screen display support, make sure it's on. Make sure you set it for raster 3D. Uh, on screen display coordinate space, set it for viewport. On screen display for shadow, put it on. On screen display palette, I usually leave it that right there. On screen displays zoom is you can do this. Okay, now watch this. You can make it bigger or smaller. Whatever size you want to make it, you can make it. You can take this little 60 and you can move it all the way around wherever you want. Because this position, what you're looking at right here is, is your screen. Your actual screen, it's going to be on. I don't know why. Mine's always down here for some reason, but you can pick what it, this right here. This box is a replica of your screen, your actual physical screen, you know, your monitor in front of you. This is where you can take and put the text. Let me go ahead and open up um, something real quick and we can show you that. We will open up Benchmark Tools. We will open up, let's say, Heaven Benchmark. We'll open up Heaven Benchmark. Right there. Okay, and then I got it 800 by 600, so... There. Now, I did this because I hit F12. See on my screen? Now watch over here at Reva Tuner. I know it's gonna it's gonna lag a little bit. Because I'm actually moving this around for you. Okay. So, there you go. It's all set. I got everything set in stone. I can click camera. Click free. Okay, so now... As you can see, this shows exactly what I said. The temperature... GPU usage, frequency, power usage, wattage usage, GPU, um, GPU voltage, the processor voltage. Right here, this, this is your memory. 
overall memory, what you're using, and your total megahertz for the GPU. CPU, temperature, usage, total frequency, wattage. Now MEM, the MEM is used for the VRAM. The RAM is used for your, for your PC RAM. And where it says D3, D11, that means it's DirectX 3 or DirectX 11. It's kind of hard to explain that. But it shows the FPS and it shows the millisecond of timing the delay of the delay the delay of timing my bad sorry i'm i'm like uh, making this video and i'm about you know downtown with it so but as you can see it's not too bad the way i got mine set up so that's pretty much it there's Minimize and do remember if you don't minimize Hit the minimize button You'll turn it off so with MSI afterburner and Reva tuner this little line make sure you hit it because if not You'll end up closing the program It's not not simple as if you hit the X, you know, it would close. No, it's not like that. So you got to hit the minimize button and it takes and minimizes it to your desktop system tray. So it'll be right on your desktop. So all in all, treetop tall. Let me go ahead and just close out some things. Hit that X mark and... Hit that X mark and there. Now I'm happy. <laughs> okay, everybody. See, it's not so bad with um, MSI Afterburner. There's not much to it. It's very simple. It's very direct. Just take your time going through it and you'll understand it a lot more when you take your time through it. But with this video, you can take your time through all of it. To me, I don't see why I should break this all up, but I am breaking this all up into little segments for you all. So this way, you know, you can go back and you can see which segment you want to, you know, to review. This way you don't have to take and, you know, search leg and foot and everything else. You just know where to start and stop. So it'll make it easier for you. So, but anyway, this concludes the video. And if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. And if you've already subscribed, welcome to the family. Welcome to JJ's PC Builds community. And my veteran subscribers, as always, much love to you for all that you do. Help and support the channel, watching videos from beginning to end. And also to telling your friends to come on down here and subscribing and watching the videos from beginning to end. That helps support the channel a lot because we do need to get more subscribers and more thumbs up. We got over 300 plus. We need 300 plus thumbs ups would be appreciated as well. But until the next time in the next video, you know who it is and we'll see you on the next video.